Welcome, welcome, Marla Maples. It's lovely to have you. I'm Karid Winter, everyone. I'm the host and the founder of Mission D, Mindful Education. And we're so excited to have Marla here with us today. Um, I just want to share a little bit about Marla and the type of work she does. Um, she's a dancer, an amazing dancer. Um, well, you know, when the job calls for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's a life coach and she's an amazing yogini. That's a woman that practices yoga. Um, and she's done a lot of work with some very incredible people in the world, um, such as His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Michael Beckwith. Um, she's done, hosted a talk radio show called Awakening, Awakening with Marla with specialists in the wellness world. Um, and she's the mother of a daughter. Her name is Tiffany Trump. And she has been using mindfulness practices in her personal life and her professional life for years. Um, as far as her dancing career goes, um, she tangled her way through season 22 of Dancing with the Stars. Um, which is amazing. I love that show. It's an incredible <laughs> show. Um, Co-hosting The View, The Doctors, Good Day New York, and um, performing around the world in places like Rome and Italy. And um, she's also had reoccurring, um, she's been an actress on reoccurring TV shows. Um, so I am just so delighted to have you with us. I have to just brag a little bit more. <laughs> so when I called Marla, um, we had a couple um, conversations and points of contact over the last few days. And I have to say, Marla, you're doing so much humanitarian work around the world. Um, I know you've worked with like the Global Summit on Science and Spirituality, and you've done work with the Louis Armstrong Center and Harvard University and the United Nations. And a day in the life of Marla is a day of altruism. It's a day of caring and giving and giving back to the world. And I remember the day that I met you, I didn't know I didn't know who you were, and um, you came to that party we had in Battery Park, and we were texting, and you were just this gorgeous woman with a beautiful heart and a beautiful soul that really embodied the practice of mindfulness, and that's what struck me the most about you—that you really embody mindfulness, you embody presence, and you offer a lot of grace to people that are in need of comfort. And considering the state of the world, I thought. Why not have you on our show so you can share this embodied grace and comfort with people out there that are living in fear or that are feeling a lot of anxious, like we all are, you and I both and everyone, but, and maybe share some of your wisdom and practices. There's a lot of parents that are tuning in right now with their children, children of all ages. Um, some parents texted me before and they're so excited to meet you and connect with you. So um, before we start, just, let us know how your day is going. How are you doing? How are you handling this crisis? Thank you for that sweetness. You know, you, you we reflect that light in each other. And that's what we have to remember is what we give to the world is, is really a reflection. And, and, and so I just have always, so as a young girl, before people knew who I was, they say, oh, Marla, she's the girl who smiles all the time. <laughs> and so, so I always believe the power of just even, even when you're not having your best day, if you can somehow dig so deep inside and find that place within you that can tap into your, your joy and, and a reason to smile and you share that back, I mean, that can change the universe. I believe just mm -hmm. one person at a time you give it to can reflect and create a ripple effect to so many others. So, so today you're seeing me uh, 41 floors up. Definitely still in lockdown. I, and this is probably the most groomed I've been in days because, you know, when you have permission and you're told not to leave your home, right. it's really nice. Things, you know, get wild. And yeah. <laughs> I said to Karen before we started, I said, can I be a little late to put on a touch of makeup? <laughs> I don't even know if I still know how. <laughs> I know. But, well, you look beautiful. And, well, and listen, hey, we, we all know that we're digging deeper beyond anything that we ever held to be our truth right now. I mean, the things that maybe we held on to as being super important, like our, you know, our exterior and our, you know, the way we show up, you know, at all these events that are calling us or, you know, kids that are now at home are like, wow, they're embracing. It's a new, it's a new life, you know? Yes. So instead of, of thinking like, 
oh my gosh, I, I can't believe I'm not at my school. Think about, oh my gosh, God has me in a place I've never been before. I'm going to have a whole new experience now. And I am experiencing parts of myself that I've wanted to take time to experience. You know, I have this little mini trampoline. I don't know if you can see it over oh, here. Yeah. A girlfriend gave yes. me. I love the trampoline as a kid and she knows. I'm like, honey, thank you. I don't think I'm going to do my uh, backflip on that. But just <laughs> simply you know, bringing things around me in, in this home space that, that are connecting me to my youth. And I think you moms and dads that are out there and have your kids there, oh my gosh, are you learning how to tap into your kids in a different way now? Um, uh, I wish I had my daughter here more. She's still in school at 26. She's uh, finishing right. up law school this semester. Uh, but I, but I, I do find that I'm, I'm taking more time to meditate, uh, but more time to truly listen to where my, my real calling is. Uh, it's, it's hard in life when we're getting pulled in many directions. And now we have permission to stay here pray for each other, connect with people in a different way, and, and do the things that are truly in our heart. I, had, I have a recurring role on an HBO series called The Righteous Gemstones, and I was really excited. I was supposed to be on a plane today to fly to Charleston to start shooting, and that was great, because as an actor, I've been an actor since I was 18 years old, you just like, you know, you go out for so many jobs, and you just, you always think, this is it, this is it, and then it's like, oh, it's not it. It's not it. It wasn't meant to be. And then when you finally do book that great part, it's like, I'm going to work. Uh, yes. So now we shifted it. I'm able to sit and talk with you, um, you know, but, but things change. I mean, it's, it's life is all about how do we deal with these changes when they come? Yes. And, and, and um, you know, so, so we're all going through it and we're all like reshuffling and reorganizing our lives now and our expenditures and, and, um, how we connect to people. But I, I highly recommend at the beginning of each day, um, however you believe, do a, do a meditation. If it's 10 minutes, 15, 20, even better. But mm -hmm. I do start my day, first of all, just with a blessing of gratitude for yeah. waking up this day, even if I'm waking up with a little anxiety, because I do sometimes. How can I help? How can I share? Am I doing enough? You know, do I really want to do more right now? Those are the questions that go through your head. And, and then if I pop, make myself pop out of bed in those moments and literally say, okay, I'm going into the grateful mode. Okay, I am here and I'm alive and I thank you, God. I am here and I accept it and I'm going to be grateful for this moment and let's see what you have for me. That's and then I'll take, you know, my little hot water and lemon, maybe sprinkle a little baking soda in there to get alkaline. And I'll, and I'll take my 10 minutes and I'll sit and, and meditate. And, mm -hmm. and to start the meditation for me, um, getting the breathing right is good. Um, I love to breathe in through my nose for four seconds, like then hold for another four, then release through my nose for six seconds, hold out for two, then start the process again. So it's just giving an alignment in your body with your breath of breathing in, holding for four, breathing out for six, holding for two. So it's really a sequence of eight counts. And if I do that a few times, I've slowed my heart rate down and I then feel like I'm ready to, to go into a deeper meditation. And for me, that is, um, I've been studying, I've been a student of the Kabbalah Center for many years. So I do a specific uh, prayer called the Anabakoa, which is quite beautiful. It's in the ancient Aramaic language. But the consciousness behind it is to break through the different dimensions between us and God. And through that, you know, gaining, gaining a, a deeper connection to our divine self, which we all, we all are. We're made of divinity, aren't we? We're all sparks That's of light. And, and so, so how can we connect to those sparks of light? I so those it. prayers. Another prayer that I like to do, especially if when we're able to go outside, and some of you may have backyards where it's okay to be outdoors now. Right now, I'm, I'm kind of steering away from any of that. I mean, I could, there's a little park in my, my back of my building I can go to, but I just love to, to stand very, very strong. My doorbell's reading, that's weird. I love to stand strong 
<laughs> can you see me? But yes, see. we can see you. Yep. Please just leave it. We have to tell people to leave things at the door now, don't we? Yeah, good idea. But the, sometimes when I go to the park, I, I, I love to do something called earthing and I'll stand on the yes. earth, I'll stand on a rock and just imagine myself, I'm, squint, I'm squishing down so you can see me, <laughs> but I'm gonna be standing really tall and I imagine myself like there's a crystalline energy. You've seen beautiful crystals, right? Yes. Like there's a crystal beautiful light energy coming from the top, way, way, way above my head and my, we call this the crown chakra all the way down and going through my entire body, just letting that light feel my body all the way down deep into the earth. So I've created like a conduit from heaven and earth together. That strengthens me. I mean, I find that that simple grounding does give me strength. Yeah. Oh, that was whole food. <laughs> that, oh, that's the order. That's amazing. <laughs> it took me three yeah. days to get this delivery. <laughs> That's amazing. You've been trying to get Whole Foods Prime for three weeks. Well, that's a beautiful practice. I love that. I love that you do the breath counting. We started a mindful mentor programming. Um, it was a new launch we did this January, and it's been incredible because we asked the students as mindful mentors to write their own meditation practices. Um, and one of the kids actually wrote a breath very similar to yours, where you breathe in for four, you hold for two, and you breathe out for six, which is a little different than what you were doing, but it was so similar as I'm doing it. I'm like, wow, they must have been tapping into some universal breath there. Right. So that's beautiful. And I think that um, earthing, we love earthing at our home. I actually have an earthing that I'm going to show you. This is called oh, I need a mat right here. And I keep it yeah. underneath my feet every day. Um, and it connects us to the earth, to the vibrations of the earth. It's called an earthing mat. So we're huge fans of earthing and we train 99% of we do, what we do is train children, but we also train adults. And I was asked to train some of the Mountain View Police Department because I lived in Palo Alto for years and they loved the counting breath. And they actually do um, a counting breath when they're driving in traffic or they're stressed. So if any of our parents are healthcare workers or police officers, mm -hmm. The counting breath is a wonderful thing. And, and we say with the kids, like breathing in for a minimum of four and mm. a maximum of 10 is usually where we leave the numbers at. But any time you can breathe in for four and you want the exhale to be a little longer, like you just taught us, right. that's right. It such a sick. gift. Right. Yeah. And then as far as mindset goes, I think that there's such a variety of people out there with different beliefs. And um, I know that you're working with a lot of the Jewish schools in New York City and and that's really where your expertise also lies in working with the schools. And um, we also work with a lot of private schools and uh, schools of different religions. And I think that for everyone, just reminding them, because we're a, a secular organization, but to rem just remind them to tap into whatever their spiritual practice is. And Absolutely. whatever that is, whether they believe in whatever their belief system is, you know, their higher power is to tap into that. And if they don't have one to tap into themselves and the world around them, um, to just connect with that state of peace. And, um, and there's yeah. so many universal truths out there that are so similar. And I could just yes. see behind you, you have um, like some things that like <laughs> background of the earth and some very natural yeah. elements that you're connected to. I have my amethyst and some of my other stones and I, I've studied, I, I grew up a Christian in the South and I've studied, you know, I always want to know how everybody finds God. So I've studied so many different faiths. So you'll see books all around from every faith you can imagine, because I believe that the truth is the truth. And when we can peek, find that within all of us, then we're, then we're living without judgment. And then we have a deeper understanding of, uh, of each other and ourselves. And it takes away a lot of fear when we yes. can understand deeper into others. So, so yes, I tried to bring a little bit of the earth with me. So lots of stones, lots of crystals. Um, here's two I have right here. <laughs> These are all oh, very nice. And, and, you know, so I, and I also, you know, by the computer, because we're on the computer a lot. I don't know if uh, um, anyone of you follow me on Instagram, but I just posted about what we can do to start hardwiring our homes again because it's really important that the, the wireless networks are, are showing a lot of harmful effects to all of us here's a crystal that i i keep beautiful yeah i heard that they're putting 5g in all the california schools right or a lot of the california silicon valley schools while schools are closed which 
it's concerning for me on a personal level because um, I'm not a fan of that type of technology. Um, I know that also with technology, like so many parents um, like you right now have older children that they're not physically there with. And um, that can be difficult because you worry about their health and well-being and you miss them and you want to hug them. Do you have any tips on how you've been handling um, being a mom that's away from her older child and how you cope with that um, in this time? I, you know, my daughter was here, thank gosh, spring break hit, hit just before we understood the, the, what was going on truly with the, the COVID-19. And so we had a week here together. And when we, we started hearing that there was going to be a bit of a crisis, she's like, mom, you've got to come with me to DC. And I was like, I'm going to go live with my baby. <laughs> I got so excited because she's in school at Georgetown Law. Right. Um, and then, you know, we woke up the next day and we went, it's not just, it's, it's okay. And there's not a big rush. And she goes, yeah, maybe you don't want to live with me all the time, mom. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not <laughs> sure about that. I kind of think I do, <laughs> but, but, but we, and you know, made a choice because she's in school. She's studying around the clock, not a lot of sleep, not a lot of uh, time for extra conversation. And, and I knew that if I could stay here, I would, be in, in this tower, just I want to, you know, every day pray to all the four corners and just do, and we can do that in our environment too, just to spread this light, you know, around our city, our homes, you know, start within and then spread it without the world. And I was speaking to a shaman friend of mine, Marek, yesterday, and he said, imagine an avalanche, like the beautiful snow, like an avalanche pushing and cleansing all of this pain and suffering and, and virus away. And, and if we each can do that, imagine just like an avalanche that's cleaning all this away. And we use our energy to help clean our environment around us. So that's, that's beautiful. something I, I, I try to remind my daughter. She's, she's doing a great job. She's a smart girl. But, but, you know, we all have our purpose. It's difficult to separate from your kids. We I'm have a mom. question here. Sure. Um, oh, okay. Wow. So it's from... Um, it's from actually a famous person that wants to stay anonymous, but they're saying that they're a single mom in quarantine and they're curious about what they can do um, with their kids to teach their kids um, stress reduction techniques. Younger kids, under the age of 10, if you have one, oh, one offer. Can you share one with me right now? <laughs> can you share it? I can share it. Share a child. <laughs> oh, share a child. Yeah. Can you share a child with me? I'm fine. I, like, I still have pictures all around of when she was, the, you know, your, your children's age. So I, I still can tap into that. Um, you know, I, honestly, I love turning on music and dancing. Such a great thing to do. But even just simple things like, like I do for myself sometimes. And I tell my daughter when she's stressed, the jumping up and down. You know, like if you don't have a mini trampoline, which is really fun to hold their hands and let them jump on a mini trampoline because it gets the, the lymphatic system going, it gets the immune system stimulated, and it immediately taps you into joy. But even if you don't, just the jumping together and just making silly faces and just throwing it around, you know, just shaking it all out because our body holds that stress and our body he holds on to, you know, a lot of, in our environment. So just shaking it out is good. And another thing you might get them to do that I teach my girlfriends to do and my daughter is do you do tapping? So right. tapping. And then you can all tap together. You start at the head and you work all the way down. And it's like it kind of tickles and it's kind of fun. But you go all the way down to the bottom of your toes. And you can squeeze your big toes together to squeeze them really tight. Because there's a little point down there that triggers your, helps your immune system too. Mm. And then start tap, 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 tap all over. And you've done this little fun tapping exercise. I, I love that. Yeah, I love tapping. They do that in some of the yoga classes I've been to. And also um, they do like emotional freedom techniques, right? The tapping, um, EFT they call it. And they tap at certain yes. meridian points in the body. And um, I know Nick Order, who I have spoken on, a, I spoke on a panel with once and he created um, this beautiful book about called The Tapping Solution and, and how you can tap through the meridians and how, how it helps reduce stress. And I also love the trampoline. My niece and nephew have a trampoline in their backyard. They're really little, two and four. But um, I had a therapist once 10 years ago. I was stressed about work. I was overworked. And he 
literally let, was sitting in his therapy chair and got up, went into his garage, got that same size trampoline and put it in the middle of his office and said, Corinne, get on the trampoline. I want you to jump. So here I was in this therapy, office, jumping on a trampoline, which seems so silly, but now that I understand the lymphatic system and how important that is, and we actually do a- My nose is running now because it literally, it helps. And right now we want to keep our passages so open and clear. So you're, you're really having fun with your kids, but you're also helping keep these passages clear, which is important. Beautiful, beautiful. So I, if anyone out, out there has any questions, I just opened up the chat group um, to, to, to glance at it. But I think I'm getting text message um, questions <laughs> on my own. So- um, Someone just said they met you in 96. You're beautiful inside and out. And um, oh, was one of my board members. So you and your daughter was three. So yeah, so for oh. all of you out there that are with your children or not with your children, just remember to breathe, to self-regulate, to take it easy, to do your own spiritual practice, to get outside if you can, connect with the earth, connect with one another, tap, jump, do movement, do yoga, and connect with your heart, which Marla does. But um, before we end our interview, Marla, I just wanted to ask you, what is it that you're most excited about that you're working on these days? What projects you have going on in your personal life or in your business life or your work in philanthropy and altruism that you're working on that you feel most excited to share with our audience today? It's all such an evolution right now because the things that I was stepping into have halted a bit, you know. So so now it's a it's a time of really reestablishing what in my heart is the most important. Um, I'm currently reworking my website to make it more uh, interactive. And I I do a lot of sharing on my Instagram now. But there's I'm I'm working with a team of of wellness experts. Um, a lot of functional medicine doctors where we have a huge, huge group that we're sharing information now and trying to find the best ways to help people uh, build their immune system. And everyone I know, of course, is looking for the cure for what's happening now. So, so I'm very excited about this team of, uh, of uh, people who really care. Uh, mm -hmm. We call them the PLUs, people like us who really care about humanity and want to help uh, inspire people how to take their health back. Um, to themselves and you know that we are our best doctors I mean we, we can we can be our own doctors I mean there is <laughs> there is so many incredible people that are doing so much for us so I just want to say thank you and gratitude to all the doctors and nurses and the risk they're taking but let's do everything we can to keep ourselves healthy so we're not a burden to, to others so that's something I'm passionate about and also sharing information um, about how we can protect ourselves from um, the wireless internet situations and oh, yeah. the 5G. Um, yes. We need to come together really strong as communities and, and not, not accept it really and, and, and learn ways to start hardwiring the old school ways yeah. that we used to with the Ethernet cable is a good Absolutely. thing. Um, the the um, Children's Health uh, Children's Defense Health Group, uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. offers a lot yeah, they offer a lot of in my family because he is really on point with um, holistic medicine and and um, yes. ethics around pharmaceutical drugs and also around the 5G. And it was actually through Bobby's website that I found that they were putting the 5G in all the California schools. And there's been a lot of research on um, the potential for that to really net lower our immunity, which we all need a, a good working immune, immunity right now, an immune system. So Children. thank you for sharing that resource. Yeah. And thank you it's for children's help. Thank you. No, I posted it on my, uh, my most recent post was was uh, given some guidelines. So if you peek peek on there, it's it's this ah, it's this post. And if you link in, um, you can you can go to the site that tells us things that we can do in our own home to help. But again, the organization is Children's Health Defense. So I'm I'm learning a lot with them. I've intuited this situation many years ago and now we're seeing the science behind it. So yeah, we have to do all we can and support each other and our kids and yes. and, um, and yeah. keep them safe and healthy. So I'm gonna, I'll post the Children's Health Defense, um, Bobby's website on um, below here when we get off. Then I'll also post your website, which is marlamaples.com um, where people can learn Absolutely. about work. And it's been such a pleasure yeah. to have you with us here today. Would you like to close out with a breath or would you like me to close us out? Whatever you prefer. 
I just want to do like a, a simple little prayer. I mean, I just ask Great. that, um, I just want to ask God's, God's healing on everyone here today that we, that we truly learn and feel how we're all connected as one heart and one soul and that we can tap into that interconnectivity between all of us that I can feel you now, Karen, and that energy is between us and it spreads out to all of you as a, just a reminder of how we are all one. So let's just bring our thoughts and our consciousness together and feel that energy and feel that tingling, knowing that we are all connected and we are all, we are all gonna come out of this so much stronger, so much wiser, with so much more light to share. And thank you and such gratitude for all of you that tuned in and thank you for having me, Gary. Thank you so much, Marla. It's been my pleasure. So again, I'm Karen Winter here at missionve.org, and I have Marla Maples here with me, and it was lovely interviewing her, and you can learn more at marlamaples.com about her work in the world. And thank you, Marla, for all you're going to continue to do the rest of this day. I know you have a busy day ahead of you. I appreciate your time, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Have a healthy and happy day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.